we want to have a look at a very, very interesting topic, how to get started in automated trading. Some of you probably have, um, yeah, probably have, have thought about getting started in um, automated, respectively, algorithmic trading. And uh, we want to dig deeper into this topic today, have a have a, a look at what to take into account, what to think of before you get started. And um, yeah, so before we start, let's have a look here at today's agenda. So um, today, first of all, we have a quick introduction to automated and manual trading, um, bring out uh, the key differences, pointing out the key differences and also point out where do the two ways of trading intersect. So first of all, um, it should be clear that um, based on, on um, yeah, the assumption that trading is rules-based, that both are following clear predefined rules. Uh, one which you um, execute automatically and uh, one, one um, um, site where you, where you um, execute your trades manually, but both follow certain, certain rules. This is uh, something we want to look into here today. Um, we also uh, want to want to differentiate or find out that automated algorithmic and quantitative trading uh, are the same. Are they all the same? That's the question we want to answer here. And uh, then we also want to uh, dig into an example here, show first steps how to get started in algorithmic trading from a pure theory theoretical perspective, I'm sorry, um, and then also give an example on um, how this could look like, in fact. So uh, that's me. My name is Jens. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm the, the moderator today, and um, I'm, I'm really happy to be here uh, in the chat box um, here in the webinar or in the description box on YouTube. If you watch the recording, you um, have the chance to read an interview with me, which I did together with Amra Markets to give an idea on uh, who am I, um, um, respectively, where do I come from. Um, today, I just want to make things short here and just um, point out that um, I'm from Berlin, from Germany, and this is noteworthy because it already gives a, a first idea on um, uh, on Atmar Markets as a broker, as a financial service provider with um, over 20 offices around the globe, in fact. And uh, one of these global offices is, in fact, here in Germany, and um, it's around 30 minutes uh, so from, from, from my office here to Admiral. And uh, this is, um, why is it important? I mean, certainly we could now talk about um, um, why Admiral Markets is, is special. In fact, um, I highly recommend giving Admiral a deeper look based on the trading conditions in general, commissions, um, spreads you get. It's not just true when it comes to index trading. Uh, here in Germany, for example, we refer to Admiral Markets as DAX expert with um, a, probably the most competitive um, offering when it comes to DAX CFD trading. But in addition to that, you will also find out when using, for example, external third-party um, softwares where you can compare spreads with each other, that Admiral is all the time um, among the uh, brokers with the tightest spreads, in fact. And um, so as you may know, as a professional trader, most of professionals find their performance um, when it comes to commissions, respectively, to the spreads, because this is the cost, which is connect cost of doing business and our business is trading. Um, so based on that alone, it, it's definitely um, worth to give up a deeper look. But when it comes to um, um, especially customer service, and this is something which is um, of high interest for many, probably. I'm, uh, I'm, I myself come out of the uh, financial industry and um, I've been in retail banking before. I got started in trading in the trading industry. And uh, what I can say based on personal um, uh, talks and conversations with people, with clients, was that they wanted to talk to someone in their respective language. And while we are talking English here, probably you're looking at this now um, somewhere around the world, <laughs> somewhere, um, and, and you would say, well, I'm, I, I'd prefer to talk to someone in my um, um, mother tongue, in my, my native language, um, whatever that might be. And the chances are very, very high that you will find someone at Amar Markets, um, given the fact that there's 20 offices around the globe, you can then talk to in your native um, uh, language. And this 
I think adds tremendously um, in terms of uh, the trust you built within your broker. You have to have a very good partnership with when it comes to trading, in fact. So yeah, that's it on um, Atmar Markets. And uh, now let's have a look here. Um, first of all, at the differences between automated and manual trading. So let's start with manual trading. I think many of us right here are probably familiar with that um, um, uh, form of trading. Um, in fact, what is manual trading? It's uh, trades are entered by a human, okay? So it's like by clicking a mouse and, and, and us doing it discretionary, let's say, um, or in discretionary way. And um, we make our, our trading decisions here. We take our um, trading mostly based on technicals, um, technical analysis, for example, price action analysis, but some also based on fundamental and sentiment based patterns. So let's assume, for example, um, you have currently a very skeptical outlook for the uh, not just US economy um, and based on whatever reason. I mean, there's plenty of reasons you can bring up here from a fundamental perspective, not just um, uh, or especially from a fundamental perspective. Perspective. So it's difficult to analyze um, um, an economy based on technical analysis and say, well, there, uh, this and that, um, I don't know, trade deficit here uh, looks like a head shoulder formation or something quite ridiculous, I think. Um, but Let's say you come to the uh, conclusion that um, uh, there is a, um, um, a debt explosion, let's say, which uh, has to be financed by the Fed, for example. You might come to the conclusion that uh, yields are about to continue to trade lower from the current levels, even though we currently present ourselves in a stable environment. But given the recent rhetoric, for example, used from Jay Powell and, and Jackson Hole um, when he said the uh, Fed is now going for average inflation targeting, for example, um, you come to the conclusion that you say, well, I'm positive for gold and uh, take the trade here from a longer term uh, perspective. And you enter the trade manually based on current fundamental from the current fundamental picture, based on the fact that in gold, technical wise, we uh, broke out to new all time highs, for example, currently consolidating um, and also probably based on sentiment. So how are professionals or, or large speculators are positioned? So therefore, for example, you could have a look at the so-called commitment of traders report and uh, currently see that gold traders, for example, are continuing to build their long exposure in gold, for example. And based on that, you could come to the conclusion um, that given certain parameters, which will mainly be um, 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 identified via technical analysis, in fact, so where do we enter the trade? Where do we put our stop? Where's our target? Um, but all in all, you can see this is manual trading. It follows um, an algorithm to some extent. So you go through these steps here, technical picture, the technical picture, fundamental picture, but also sentiment picture. But um, um, you enter the trade manually by clicking your mouse, respectively coming to the conclusion that today is a good day to buy gold. In fact, it is. Um, uh, so you, when, when, you, when you look at gold, some of you probably remember a webinar we did together here um, several months ago that was on uh, um, gold and uh, identifying a seasonal pattern, which um, pointed out that trading gold from the long side uh, from the closing price of a Thursday till the closing price of a Friday is in fact a profitable trading strategy in, in, in gold, uh, which could be easily automated in fact, but follows a clear pattern. Where do I enter the trade? Where do I have my stop respectively? Where do I have my take profit? In this case, it's special because there is none, but you could find out that this is following a clear predefined algorithm. You could automate, but it's based on a discretionary approach, which you could easily also um, trade manually. So, um, the next is automated trading we want to look at here. So manual trading, then we have automated trading. Um, and uh, so the trading decisions here um, are in fact similar identified, similarly um, identified, okay? So um, automated trading and manual trading, it, follows the same pattern when it comes to identify a pattern. But in case of automated trading, uh, the trades are then automatically entered, respectively, uh, completely taking out the human component. So while you could probably come to the conclusion to say, today, I want to trade gold. Last week, you probably might have said, no, I don't want to be long gold let's say on a Friday, for example, for whatever reason. So probably because based on a very bearish um, reaction, 
or two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago, I think, um, a very re bearish reaction on um, an all-in-all -all positive picture, which was painted by Jay Powell, for example. Let's take this as an example. I think it's perfect working here because um, Jay Powell brings up um, average inflation targeting. Some of you might conclude that um, leaving uh, or letting inflation run above the um, uh, Fed um, level of 2%. So this is the level the Fed wants to see when it comes to inflation. And, and if you have average inflation targeting, the communication says, based on what Paul um, Powell had said in Jackson Hole, that they are willing to leave um, uh, um, um, inflation overshoot for an extended period of time, probably. While he not clearly defined what is an extended period of time, but if you hear something like that, and if you take into account that gold, for example, is an inflation hedge, well, you might come to the conclusion that it's a good time to go long gold. On the closing price of Thursday, so this is then the um, um, entry logic you follow here. But if you now see that after an initial spike on the upside, gold uh, drops lower from there and is probably aggressively um, um, sold out over the day then, um, the hours following the comments from Jay Powell, you might come to the you might come to the conclusion that's not a good time to buy gold because it's a weak reaction. Now, the thing is, why do I make this a topic? Because it's just two weeks ago. So you can easily check out your chart now and we'll find out all I just said um, is something which really happened that way. So it's not just that the speech from uh, um, Powell in Jackson Hole took place. But in addition to that, there was this initial spike higher and then there was this sharper decline on the downside. And you might come to the conclusion based on whatever feeling you might have when you trade manually, that you say, that's a weak reaction. I don't wanna be long gold in that environment. If you look at the price action the Friday after, you will see that gold performed extraordinarily well that day. I have to say, I was surprised myself to see that. But if you fully automated your trading here and just followed the predefined rules, buy gold on the closing price on the Thursday and take the trade out the day after on the closing price each Friday, you would have made a profit and you would have taken out by following it purely um, automatically here, you would have taken out this human component, in fact, these emotions, this feeling that something's probably not working here. And that's a perfect example where human emotions um, are, yeah, becoming a problem. I think the, 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 um, um, uh, the thing is that the uh, idea behind skipping this trade was completely fine. And based on the uh, fundamental side, I have to say that the day after, so when I, when I went to bed Thursday evening on the 27th of August, if I'm not mistaken, um, I was like, well, I expect gold to sell off tomorrow and drop significantly below 1,900 USD. In fact, the complete opposite was true. I came to the conclusion based on my analysis, but I was wrong. And whatever emotion drove me there, whatever, let's say, um, uh, how can we say that neurotransmitter cocktail <laughs> was within me that day, which um, resulted in my bearish outlook for gold, the human component would have been taken completely out if the strategy was just followed in an automated fashion and just said, well, we buy the closing price each, each Thursday. So you see, both follow a pattern while one takes out the human component um, completely. And uh, so that's something I, I summed up here. So both approaches should follow, should, it's not necessarily sad that they follow, but in case of automation, in case of an automation of your trading, you will see that there is a clear um, plan, a predefined plan with clear rules, which have hopefully a positive expectancy here. Um, and yeah, you might probably argue that automated is uh, truly statistic based. Manual trading has an emotional component attached. So this is where the difference comes into play. So in case of automated trading, you just follow the, the rules and you just have a trade and you don't really care whether the next trade is a winner or a loser because you know over um, a certain period of time, the edge you identified and you automated with an expert advisor, for example, and the rules you follow here. Well, this should usually then result in a rising equity curve. And uh, certainly there is some, well, an experience um, component, let's call it. I, I, I prefer to do that. Uh, so to combine um, um, my, my, my manual trading with my automated trading. So in fact, most of my trading is nearly um, um, automated, in fact. So I'll put it differently. So if you're long enough in, within that market and, and you're trading the markets every day and uh, you, you have 
loads of experience and you're not just a trader but also in addition to that you're getting paid to to write analysis for a broker for example for clients whatever um based on that experience you will find out that um the the, the deeper you you dig into the matter of trading and into the financial markets for every reason you should be long let's say gold again um, you find minimum two reasons not to be long that trade. And uh, I, it, it took time for me to recognize this, but over, over the years, so right now, my, my trading became automated nearly four or five years ago, fully automated, in fact, when it comes to entering the trade. It was just, um, yeah, I have to say, I, I got sick of it. So um, there were so many trades I um, uh, did not take because I had... 10 reasons not to take the trade, um, even though uh, my, 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 my rules I, I usually follow in within my trading um, were, 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 were given respectively, were um, I'm fulfilled here. So I, I could have easily take, taken the trade and, and followed my rules here, but I then found a reason why I should skip the trade. Um, that doesn't mean that I was unprofitable. So I, I still made money, um, but I could have made more money by just following my rules um, and, and taken out or, or having taken out then this, this um, emotional component resulted in a natural let's call it boost in my performance, but also in my, um, in my feelings in general. So I feel completely fine by fully automating the process of entering a trade. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I just take every trade. So there are times when I say, well, currently, I just don't want to uh, be positioned um, for whatever reason. Let's say, let's take the Corona lockdown, for example. I think this is a good example. So there have been times when uh, you just saw the market selling out, really selling out into the evening. And you know, the next day, um, you are probably taking a trade. Um, and it really didn't really matter whether it's a long trade or a short trade. But you saw that during um, or shortly after um, the market opening where volume coming into the market, I think that's probably a better way to put it since we have now extended trading hours um, when it comes to tax trade. Well, what, what you could have seen is that there was sometimes 200, 300 points of movement between 8 to 9 a.m. German time in this case. So 9 a.m. is special because this is the time when in case of the DAX, for example, Xitra opens and the market starts to trade. So if you have that a market width or that big range and this high volatility already before the spot market opens and the most or the, the highest volume pours into the market. It's usually not a time I really feel comfortable trading within. And um, that resulted sometimes in me taking out the trade or skipping a trade and saying, no, I don't want to be positioned here based on my rules and based on my entry um, rules I, I usually follow and which are usually uh, traded fully automated. And what I then do is I document my interventions, which means, let's say my trade with, um, um, uh, or I know that the, the stop width would have been something like, let's say 150 points. Um, so what I then do is I look at how I performed compared to the basic strategy based on my personal intervention here. That means if um, the stock is hit in the basic trading um, um, or in the, in the basic version of the strategy I follow and um, I didn't take the trade, I get a plus 150. If the market, um, if, I, if I haven't taken the trade and the market um, uh, um, shows a profit based on the, on the basic strategy and it's a 150 point win for the strategy that day, I have to write down minus 150. And this is something I write down in an Excel file and then I sum up uh, the uh, result of my interventions. And if I'm better after, let's say, a series of trades, 50 trades, for example, um, if I'm better um, with my interventions here than the basic strategy, I continue to intervene from a discretionary standpoint. If I'm less successful or if the result is negative, well, I follow my rules or my, my automated trading and try to not intervene. Try to, because I also have sometimes to fight with myself not to intervene, but um, it becomes easier, let's say. The longer you do it, the, the, the better it becomes, in fact. Um, and this is the way uh, um, I combine automated and, and manual trading, in fact. So just to give you an idea of how such a combination could look like and how I try to bring in the best of the two worlds here. Automated trading, in fact, has many advantages due to the fact that it takes out the human component and the emotions connected. And there have been plenty of trades I've taken based on the automation of my trading, which turned out to be big winners, uh, which I usually wouldn't have 
taken based on my, yeah, based on my experience, let's say, or based on my personal feelings, based on my emotions, while I still uh, um, allow myself to manually intervene into my trading. So, but let's come back to uh, today's topic. And one, one second, please. Okay. Um, so let's let's have now a look at automated trading, especially because this is the topic of today. Automated, algorithmic, quantitative trading are they all the same? So usually you use these words, um, and I can already say yes. All in all, I, I, at least in my in my world, let's say when I talk about um, algo trading or when I talk about automated trading or when I talk about quant trading. I usually refer um, to the same. Still, there are sometimes slight differences, in fact. So automated trading is uh, usually um, used um, um, when, you, when you are talking uh, about a complete automation of your, um, of your trading in terms of order generation, um, submission, and the order execution process. So it's fully automated. So you have clear predefined rules. We will, by the way, at the end of this webinar, I will um, go through an example here and show you how such an automation could look like, even though um, the rules we follow here could easily also be um, executed manually. And then automation um, or automated trading usually refers to the full automation of your trading in general. While algorithmic trading is something um, which is usually, when you read about it, uh, it's, it's similar to the definition of automated trading, um, even though slightly different. So algorithm follows an algorithm, in fact. So you have a clear plan. Um, you, 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 an algorithm, you could say you turn a trading idea into an algorithm. So a process or set of rules to be followed, if you define it um, um, here uh, concretely. And the created algorithm is then backtested with historic data to check whether it worked in the past. So that means something, um, let's, take, let's take the example with gold again, and then this simple approach, in fact. So the idea um, to test the strategy here was in fact born by the fact that someone um, came to me, he, he saw a webinar together with me. I'm not sure whether it was an Admiral Market webinar or it was one I did for myself. I'm, I'm not sure. Probably he followed me on YouTube. I don't know. So, but I, I know that he came to me and he said, Jens, I followed a guy on another webinar and he presented a strategy. Um, and I just wanted to ask you um, if you could go through this and really um, show me whether that works or not. And what do you think about this? Um, and um, so I sat down and I said, yeah, well, so well, what, what are the key parameters? And he said to me, well, buy every Thursday and um, close the position every Friday in gold. Um, there's no take profit. There's no stop loss. And he said that over the last 20 years or something, it worked out pretty well. So it all comes down to find data automate it and say, well, this is exactly the algorithm we follow here and just take it from there. I found out it works. And you know, as um, a follower here in the Trading Spotlight webinar series, it works. So this is usually the way how you turn an idea um, into an automated process, in fact, respectively into an algorithm. So what you do in this moment here is you say, I buy every Thursday on the closing price gold. I sell it on the closing price the next day, one day after. And uh, to find out whether it works or not, following these rules, here is the data. Now run the test here for the last, let's say, 20 years or so, and then see whether it works or it doesn't. Or it doesn't, it didn't. Um, and uh, so this is, in fact, how you can already see here that there is a strong um, um, connection between automated trading, full automation of your trading, and algorithmic trading. So in fact, to automate your trading, it's necessary to formulate an algorithm you can follow, or a system you formulated, or an expert advisor you programmed in the MetaTrader 4, for example, um, that this, this um, 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 algorithm is followed then and fully automated, respectively, the um, order submission, respectively, the trading of the rules you follow here, um, step by step by step is fully automated, in fact. And this is where you can see that probably algorithms come before the automation, naturally, even though if someone refers to algo trading, he usually means or talks about um, automated trading. And uh, yeah, quant trading, very similar to that. Quantitative trading involves using advanced mathematical and statistical models for creating and executing an algorithmic trading strategy. So you could say 
uh, that the knowledge around statistics, for example, or um, also when it comes to, to program uh, um, um, the strategy, then programming skills, um, that this comes before quantitative trading, even though it naturally results in using your quant knowledge and your data you um, collected to uh, bring it into an algorithm to then automate it. So probably you might come to the conclusion that you say, okay, we have quant trading, then um, quant trading means as I already said, you, you use the data or you, you find the data, you work with the data. Um, so quant trading based on the algorithm, you, you, you formulate then um, an approach which works or doesn't. You use your knowledge based on quant trading to see whether it performed well in the past. You run a back test and then you automate it for the future via, for example, programming an expert advisor and then let it run and fully automate your, your um, uh, yeah, order execution process, entering the stop, the, the take profit and so on and so forth. So this is, uh, yeah, this is, um, um, I think, self-explaining to, to some extent. And um, now the question might be, okay, what, what are the steps to become an algorithmic trader? So you can see here, I could also use a automated trading, but I, I somehow love the, the word algorithm for whatever reason. I don't know, algorithmic trading. Um, so what are the first steps, in fact? So first of all, you have to identify the core areas of algorithmic trading. Um, and that means you have to um, become an expert, respectively, at least get used to quantitative analysis and modeling. So working on statistics, exploring historical data from exchanges and designing new algorithmic trading strategies. As, especially here, this point around um, historical data is um, crucial, in fact. So you, you can... Um, uh, yeah, probably you can have a, some kind of, of a crush when it comes to, um, or you can have a crush on algorithmic trading. But if you don't have any data to work with, um, this is where the trouble starts. And what you will find out is, in fact, that high quality data is something which is difficult to get. And if you get it, if you get access to um, um, historical data and high quality data, you can analyze, you will find out that usually it comes with a price. So if you find um, somewhere a, a source in the web or somewhere else, um, which provides you with data for free, be skeptical. So that's something I'd um, 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 say here. When we um, analyzed the um, gold strategy I am referring to here, when I worked with this, uh, it, it was quite, simple because I mean we are looking at end of day data and end of day data there's not not so much um, 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 there are not so many possibilities to uh, get bad data because uh, getting this data is I mean quite cheap but if you go down in the time frames especially if you go into the um, high frequency um, um, area and if you want to start to formulate an algorithm here and and fully automate your trading on a one minute um, um, time frame for example you need thousands, you need tons of data, which is already also bringing us to a next point here, the programming skills, in fact. Um, so when we look at, for example, MQL, uh, this is the, um, uh, the, the, the programming language you use when you formulate an expert advisor or a, a script for MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5. Um, I prefer, uh, in fact, Python, um, which is easier than C++ and basic skills can already be enough to see serious progress. Um, you also might um, come to the conclusion that probably Excel is good. The thing is, and this is one of the reasons I prefer especially Python in this regard, it's because it can work with thousands of, 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 of megabytes um, of data here in a quite, uh, yeah, how can I say that? In a, in a in a time which is okay, and it's not um, it, it's not um, uh, taking one week to work through the data or something like that. Um, even though it sometimes takes some serious time to run a back test um, here in Python, if you have enough data, which has to be analyzed. But in fact, um, the the result will only be as good as the data you put in, and this is something you have to remember. And um, also, in addition to that, there's something. Um, and we, we already mentioned it, high frequency trading. So going down in the time frame could be very interesting. You could say, well, I have an idea here on M1, for example, so one minute chart, and I want to automate this idea. The thing is, the lower the time frame is you're looking at here, the more likely it is that you are fighting 
against other trading algorithms. Um, and some of them are really sophisticated and, and really advanced. So, which means nothing more than the edge can be really slim, probably can be so slim that after commissions, you don't have an edge at all, but your break even probably even there's a slight, slight minus connected to your, to your, um, uh, to your strategy before costs that might be profitable after it's not anymore. And this is something also you have to take into account here and, uh, and, and, and to consider, which means I prefer to go minimum M5, probably even higher than that. So I prefer for sometimes um, strategies which are trading H1, so all each chart, and probably also sometimes daily time frame and generate m maximum one trade per day, in fact, which also uh, then means on the other hand, naturally, that the data you uh, go through here and you have to analyze um, doesn't need to be so good i i well i'm sorry to say that really um i i i i think that wasn't a very good idea so data has to be good and data you want to analyze has to be good but um let's say you you give yourself room for an error um, um when it comes to the quality of the data the higher the time frame is and this is something to take into account even though nevertheless look all the time after the most and the highest quality data you can get your hands on and this could also mean um this is cost of doing business and doing quality want business, let's call it, uh, sometimes it comes with a price. So it's not for free. Usually high quality data, good data is usually something you have to pay for. Um, if you have good, um, this is also something, if you have a good relationship with your broker, if you have a big account with your broker, um, some, some brokers say, well, um, if you deposited a big five figure amount, for example, it could be that they provide you with data you want to see because this is a win-win situation. You can analyze the data, formulate your um, 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 positive expectancy uh, trading setup or, or your, your rules you follow. While if you execute your trades with your broker then, um, who provided you with the data will earn commissions on that. So that's a win-win. So you make the money out of the market um, and, and, and generating a profit out of the market if the um, strategy has an advantage, while your broker profits from the commission you generate. And this is somehow you can act and work together here with your broker, in fact. So sometimes uh, it's definitely also worth um, to, in this case, then contact probably Altman Markets, just ask them um, if they can provide you with data based on your idea you have here and, um, and take it from there. So, but all in all, it comes down to high quality data. This is something I definitely want to, uh, want to say here. And um, in addition to that, then certainly it's also trading financial markets knowledge, in fact. So different trading instruments, strategies, trend following, breakout, mean reversion, risk money management. So some of you might say, does it really make sense to uh, go through the education material you find on the website from Atmar Markets to communicate within our uh, trading spotlight community with traders who are also probably discretionary traders? Does it make sense to discuss discretionary um, uh, trading ideas or respectively talk to someone in general who is a discretionary trader has nothing to do with an automation of his trading. Um, does it make sense for your automated trading to, to talk to someone like that? I definitely say yes, it does because such a guy, um, a discretionary trader, can have a deep knowledge when it comes to uh, market behavior, when it comes to price action um, analysis, when it comes to risk money management techniques, when it comes to trading psychology. So it's not that as a, um, um, let's call it uh, algorithmic trader or automated um, or focused on automated trading, um, um, as a trader who, who yeah, wants to, to automate his trading, that you only have to talk to guys who are in algorithmic trading themselves. Uh, certainly it makes sense because there might be some uh, um, 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 exchanges which you won't have with a discretionary guy. For example, when it comes to programming skills, when it comes to, um, uh, um, um, how can I say that? It's uh, the, the duration process of, of formulating training, whatever. So the thing is, uh, still that it should um, um, go without a saying that you definitely could profit from someone who has a certain knowledge when it comes to price action, for example, when it comes to risk money management. And this is uh, definitely something which is uh, yeah, of high importance, in fact. And at the end, there's the studying part. So books, YouTube tutorials, blogs, forums. So some of you probably might wonder now, I was referring to the Traders Yard community here. 
Um, wh why is that of importance? As I already said, it makes definitely sense to uh, um, talk to someone who's already in trading. It doesn't really matter whether it's a discretionary guy or if it's an algorithmic trader, in fact. Um, but also in addition to that, uh, some of you might wonder, okay, wh where do I get the programming skills from? So how can I automate my strategy? I mean, there's first of all, there's services who could help you here. If you have a clear idea, but don't have the programming skills, it doesn't really matter because you can easily then buy someone who will program it for you. In addition to that, that's something I, um, I've been through to also um, extend my knowledge in this regard. Um, for example, I, I um, use the uh, platforms Udemy or also Teachable here to get or to do my first steps when it comes to programming and, and here, especially in Python. So I myself um, highly recommend you if you plan to become more familiar with the world of programming here to have a look at uh, the um, um, courses, online courses, which are offered here from Udemy and Teachable. In fact, when it comes to Python, they are um, definitely recommendable and, and, and of high value, in my personal opinion. And it's also, so um, as I already said here, um, um, it's easier than C++, for example. And uh, it, it, it can be, at, at least it was in my case, um, the case that um, basic skills already were, cap were, were putting me to a level where I thought, well, this is something which is not just um, good for my training, but in general, um, it's also something which um, um, adds to my overall um, yeah, personality, which 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 just makes me makes me um, 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 happy to to discuss it because you can see um, ideas and 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 look at certain areas of our daily lives. In fact, from a complete different angle. In fact, and then this is something where also such um, uh, programming skills come into play. In fact, and and could play a very very interesting. Um, role. So at the end, let's now have a look here how this could look like and how this pattern recognition, for example, in case of the DAX 30 CFD or B could look like. So um, this is an approach which I usually enter um, in the forum, in the trade search community every day. So every morning you have a setup here and it's based on this pattern recognition while you can see it here, by the way, um, while the um, uh, signals are fully automated. So the trades you see there are trades which are generated in the Admiral Markets um, MT4, in fact, via an expert advisor. So um, what, what happened here is, in fact, we recognize a pattern. So this is um, how this usually works. Um, I went through this with the gold idea, but you can do it um, and, and also uh, look at it from a very complex um, perspective, in fact. Uh, you, you recognize a pattern, which is in case of the DAX then here, uh, an open range. It's the high and the low, which is identified uh, between 8 to 9.05 a.m. Central European time. So now you might wonder, okay, wh why 9.05 and why 8 a.m.? Wh where does this time come from? Well, um, that idea results of the fact that uh, before December 2018, the future DAX opened at 8 a.m. German time every day. And at 9 a.m., the spot market, Xetra, opens. Um, and now the thing is, Xetra opens means the spot market um, uh, um, comes to life and there's lots of volume pouring into the market. So, which means that I try to filter out, that's the first step I do here, I try to filter out the noise here um, and wait for the first five minutes to um, take place and then formulate my trading um, um, range. My, my range I will look at here based on the open range to filter out not just the noise, but also to filter out signals which might stop me into a trade, which I don't want to take, in fact, because it's just um, a coincidence that it's happening. So then we have the high and we have the low. And what we can say here is uh, that, in fact, a pattern which was recognized already in 1980. So there was a guy called Toby Crable, um, and, and he's a very successful trader himself, a very um, 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 a successful uh, quant trader, in fact. And there was a series within a trader's uh, journal somewhere in the US. Um, and uh, based on that, there was also a book which was written then from him, which is but so it's, it's so old that it's very difficult to get it. And uh, it's, it's um, um, yeah, 
it's 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 a it's a classic but still um not really available anymore um or you have to pay a quite high price for that in fact it's some um, um, short-term patterns for day traders or something I, I have to look it up myself um but that doesn't really matter so the open range breakout strategy can be adopted to several markets and i adopted it to the dax in fact and so i have the open range i have the high and the low and then i say okay if we trade below the exponential moving average um uh, 50 here on a five minute time frame um, if we trade below that, the closing price of the last five minute candle is below that. A trade only breaks out of this range on the downside. And this is exactly what happened here that day. And uh, so the entry point is here. While I then say, okay, I place the stop at the high of the range and I work with the risk reward of one to two here, which means that if the risk, let's say, is 30 points, so the high and the low of the range, there's a difference between it of 30 points. My take profit is placed here at 60 points, two times 30, so two times 30 is 60. And uh, this is then where, where I take profit in this case. And um, this approach, that's the algorithm, as I said, we define the open range, we identify the advantage based on the EMA 50, in this case, on a five minute time frame. It's also something um, which, which results out of an observation. Some people ask me, why do you use the EMA 50? I use it because coincidentally, I, um, um, I saw, it, when I started trading, in fact, I, I had this exponential moving average um, uh, as default in my trading platform. And I saw that when I looked at the DAX on M5 in this case, I saw that the market reacted against this level. So it was kind of a moving support, respectively resistance. In case of, a, of an uptrend, intraday uptrend, there was um, the market, um, how can I say that? Uh, um, it, 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 it stopped, it, 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 or it reversed a move against this trend quite often. Let, let's just have a look here. So um, for example, it's a little unfortunate because it's not a perfect example, but you can somehow spot it here. Um, or so the, the day before, when you look at this chart, for example, here. So it's a very volatile environment. And in fact, you, we have to be really careful because here we have the overnight trading, uh, which is of low volume and thus um, it's, it, it doesn't really make sense. But you can also spot it here. After the market um, um, hit our take profit, it reversed and it found resistance in this case. So downtrend because we're trading below the EMA 50, it found resistance before then breaking above the market. And by the way, if you look at here, the time scale, you will see that once we re recapture the EMA 50 in this case, the trend is broken on the downside and the likelihood is higher at least that the market has now stopped its trend for the day probably it's completely reversing sometimes it's just trading sideways for the rest of the day and that was something i recognized and then i had a look at this i, I tested it and i found out well it works pretty well and this um this is the reason why why uh, the ema 50 in this case on a five minute time frame how this um, observation then turned into a rule here within the algorithm in fact so we, we already said we trade above we only trade breaks on the upside we trade below we close above we um close below m5 here we only trade breaks on the down upside in case of trading above we trade below we only trade tra uh, we take trades on the downside and uh so if we then trade the break in direction of the identified advantage, we place the stop above or below, depending on where the breakout occurs um, of the range. And then we say the position works with the predefined risk reward of one to two. As I already said, 30 point risk, for example, that means you multiply your risk with two and get your take profit level. And um, so what we then do is uh, we, we now formulated the algorithm. We have an observation, we have an idea, we formulate the algorithm, we probably program the idea already, for example, in an expert advisor. And then we use the data we have and run a back test. And uh, after programming the algorithm here, so based on these rules, you then run the back test via the data you get from your broker in this case. And then in this case, we have a time span here of the 26th of July um, till the 16th of August, 2017. So it's just um, to give an idea on it works. It worked at least during that time span. You could also work with more data. Um, and uh, this is then how the back test results looks like in this case. So uh, we won't go through um, all the, 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 the um, um, 
key parameters here of the strategy. Um, even though you could, for example, see that you have a winning trade, for example, here of, um, or winning percentage of 32%, for example, you have um, an average uh, um, um, winning trade of 157. So I worked with a 10,000 euro account here in this um, 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 context and 1% risk, for example, you have um, an average winning trade of 157 and average losing trade of 99.7. So which means you have a, a payoff ratio, I, I call it average gain to average loss of um, 1.55, 1.6 to 1 all in all resulting in a positive expectancy, at least for this time span. Um, and then the more data you have, the more you can see whether uh, the strategy performs also well under um, different market conditions, in fact. And this is the starting point then, in fact, to an um, automation of your trading, in fact, because this these rules here can easily be um, um, formulated. In fact, you can see it here. It's four steps you go through. You, defend, you define the range, you identify the advantage, and then you say, okay, I trade the break in direction of the advantage. I have my stop, I have my, uh, my take profit, I take it from there. So, um, and yeah, this is in fact, that could be the starting point of an automation of your trading and following a predefined algorithm. So let's sum this up. In comparison to manual trading, automated trading reduces the emotional component and thus especially uh, the negative emotions, cognitive biases, loss aversion, for example, bandwagon effect. We had some webinars on that too. Um, and uh, thus the, the negative impact of the, on the overall profitability of this approach. And um, automated algorithmic and quantitative trading have slight but notable differences not necessarily my world, but some might argue that this is the case, even though most of them mean the same. When you read about quant trading, someone refers usually to, to automated trading. If you read something about algo trading, usually it's an automation of the trading process, in fact. And uh, the core areas of um, algorithmic, tradings, uh, algorithmic trading are, first of all, quantitative analysis, respectively modeling. Then you have to have programming skills, and trading financial markets knowledge is, is essential, in fact. And uh, algorithmic trading, in fact, requires studying a lot. So it's um, not that you, that you learn how to program and then just stop and, and focus on trading, but it's a, um, um, a path you follow, similar to trading, in fact. So it goes hand in hand. And, and uh, the uh, journey is the reward to some extent. We can, we can say that here. And um, there's lots of, of information in the internet, in fact, on algo trading, like books, especially, but also tutorials, YouTube tutorials. There's lots of, 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 of um, um, topics around this um, quant trading or algo trading approach. You can read um, very, some very good blogs, forums, or Traders Yard community. It's not fully automated, let's say, uh, but at least there's um, um, a first starting point where you can um, talk to, to people who know what they're talking about. Um, there's Marcus, there's Paul, there's also me. You can ask all your questions all the time. There's plenty of online courses. Uh, as I already said, Udemy Teachable, for example. Um, and uh, again, it, it never stops. It's uh, the journey is, um, uh, or the reward is the journey. The journey is the reward. And uh, yeah, that's it on, uh, on today's webinar. So um, don't forget to join us next time. Next webinar will be on Monday with, uh, together with Paul. Um, and uh, he will talk to you about the top 10 Forex tips, trading tips every trader should know, including what do I wish I'd known when I started trading Forex. So especially Paul will answer that question from his perspective, I think. And uh, he will deliver 10 great trading tips. Um, how can you utilize these 10 tips in your own trading journey, in fact? And uh, it will be the same time, Monday, London, 2 p.m. In fact, 14th of September. Um, if you're here right now in the uh, live event, then um, you can check your inbox for the webinar link. If you watch this on YouTube, please leave a thumb up here. So if you just enjoyed what you saw, um, much appreciated to get a, a positive comment, a positive feedback, share the video, whatever, ask your questions, please feel free to do so and leave a thumb up here. I'd be uh, really happy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, if you wanna register, if you then want to ask your questions here in live, uh, then head over to atmarmarkets.com, the educations tab and there the webinars and uh, trading spotlight tab, in fact. And uh, this is the trading spotlight community I was talking about. 
Um, so get support after the webinar. If you have questions now, go over, ask your questions there, um, discuss trading strategies, your ideas. You can then also automate from there. Um, you can get trading updates every day from Marcus, Paul and me, in fact, and uh, you also get recordings beside the chance to see uh, the recording in the YouTube channel from Armour Markets. Um, you can see all webinars recorded there. And um, yeah, armourmarkets.com uh, is uh, the website. You should definitely give a deeper um, uh, con consideration, respectively, have a deeper look here at the offering from Admiral. I think it's definitely worth it. If you have any questions around Admiral, feel free to check out Admiral Markets here and contact them directly. And uh, this is the risk disclaimer. That's it from my end. So I hope you enjoyed the webinar and I wish you all the best. Happy trading. Talk to you again next week, Friday, then on the 18th of September. I look forward to it. Talk to you then. See you. And